A very good evening and welcome to the hot seat. This evening we've got in our studios Dr. Tush Vikramanayaka. She is the chairperson of the organization Stop Child Cruelty. Of course, she's here to speak with us today regarding corporate punishment meted out to corporal punishment meted out to students in schools. A very good evening, doctor, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. First, doctor, I would like to ask the basic question. What is corporal punishment? Yes, according to the UNCRC or the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child, um, corporal punishment is any physical punishment given with an intention of causing um, discomfort um, or pain, however light. Um, it also considers non-physical punishments um, such as kneeling or standing in corners or out in the hot sun and also other punishments where you make the child feel belittled, um, degraded, humiliated, scared um, such as the verbal side of punishments. Of course now uh, this brings to mind a famous quote by a Swedish uh, writer on child violence. Uh, she's Ellen Key. She says corporal punishment is as degrading to who it is meted out to as the person who meets it out. Uh, doctor, is cor corporal punishment common here in Sri Lanka? How common is it? Yes, it's, um, it's actually very common, although people don't realize it. Um, during a recent study conducted by the National Child Protection Authority in May 2017, um, they found that um, almost 80% of students were subjected to some form of corporal punishment within the last term, which is within the three months prior to that. And corporal punishment, the extreme of that is abuse, where it actually affects the child's development and health. There were 53% incidents of um, abuse happening within schools. Doctor, what are these different types of corporal punishment that are meted out in our schools? So, like I said, um, there's the physical ones that um, usually, you know, slapping or using a ruler or any other stick or cane. Um, then there's also the non um, physical side such as the kneeling or standing in corners or uh, being asked to go out um, and out in the hot sun, etc. Yeah. Also, Doctor, uh, what are the negative effects of corporal punishment being used? in our school system? Yes. So over 250 research studies have shown um, negative consequences, huge detrimental effects, um, but there isn't a single study which has shown benefit of corporal punishment. Um, some of the negative effects are for the child per se in terms of cognitive impairment, um, educational um, deficiencies, um, they don't like school, um, it affects them in um, social um, um, activities and how they uh, react in society later on in life and the, the abuse, they become abusers themselves later on in life and actually the research currently shows that some of the horrendous ragging that we see in universities is actually a direct result of the corporal punishment that they have ex experienced in schools. Uh, but the general justification that teachers or whoever people who uh, use corporal punishment as means is to discipline these students. Uh, yeah. They say if not for the corporal punishment, the children will not be disciplined, they will not be obedient, they will not learn how to listen to their adults and so on and so forth. What, what is the argument against this? Sure. So first of all, we need to identify what is punishment versus what is discipline. Okay. Punishment has negative implications and you have a negative outcome whereas discipline is a uh, ends up with a positive outcome and I think that's the main important thing um, that any teacher or a parent should identify first of all and there are a variety of ways that you can discipline a child without having to lay a hand on them or making them feel belittled um, such as in a classroom um, just so this is a very simple example there is something called um, international recognized um, thing called a rainbow system whereas if you have a group of students who are continuously creating a, a bit of commotion in class you can introduce the rainbow system where you prompt them reward them for their good behavior rather than giving them negative uh, marks for their bad behavior so the whole focus is on the reward scheme and you ask them to do some form of homework let this that that, that particular assignment needs to be done by the whole team the next day if they get do the it as a whole team they get onto the first level of the rainbow and then another one goes to the second or the third and once you reach the top level either as a, as a group or as a whole class they get a massive reward such as they get to go out that day to do their lesson or mm -hmm. they get to see a video or something like that so 
it's all about not just working alone the child then learns to work with the group they learn to be more creative they learn to think that disruption is not good and they look working towards a reward rather than doing it because they're scared which never works in the long term uh, doctor, before I get into the whole legal implications and the legal provisions in the Sri Lankan system uh, against uh, this uh, corporal punishment, I'd like to question you. How, how did you get involved in uh, advocating against corporal punishment yeah. at Sri Lankan schools? So often when people get involved in such life-changing situations, it's usually a life-changing situation that happens within your own lives as well that prompts you to get do things like this. And in my case, it was my little 11-year-old daughter who was um, subjected to corporal punishment in a, a well-known international school at the beginning of this year. And um, I, m once we started um, to take some action against it, I realized how crooked and how ineffective the whole system is, starting from the school authorities to the local police, to the Ministry of Education, to the National Child Protection Authority, to the human rights, and also to the legal system per se. There are so many loopholes and um, confusions and contradictions that ultimately I think there are no winners in this situation. So, Doctor, you said you've experienced it, you've gone through the system, there are so many loopholes and, and downfalls in the system. What are these downfalls? What are the loopholes in the Sri Lankan legal system? Yes, just like the very clear definition of what corporal punishment is, um, the UNCRC to which Sri Lanka ratified was a signatory in 1992, agreed that banning of corporal punishment has a very clear definition. Um, that means banning corporal punishment is punishment however light as it says in the definition um, explicitly in the legislature without, without any um, room for any kind of doubt or reasonable punishment in legislation. So once we signed up to the UNCRC in 1992 we actually amended uh, our penal code 308 which was specific for corporal punishment and it was henceforth called the 308A in 1995 and in it it says that anybody who meets out um, physical punishment is uh, committing a crime but it actually has a sentence that says that the punishment when it is uh, given out and causes um, suffering or pain um, so that sentence in itself, that little two words in itself, makes it um, not, uh, it, it's not explicit anymore. There is a question um, rising about the legislation. Whilst, let's say, even if we accept it, okay, we have 308A that protects our children, then in the same penal code, Article 84 says that if you're a child of less than 12 years, punishment meted out in good faith is also not a crime and also in article 341 it actually says that if a schoolmaster flogs a student so it's such such severe punishment if a schoolmaster flogs a student in good faith it is also not considered as punishment so i don't think our legal system is very clear and therefore it is this is the very reason that um, UNCRC um, gave Sri Lanka a red alert in February 2018 as a country that we have pledged with every government that has come to ban corporal punishment and we have failed. So we have now received a led red alert in February 2018. Thank you, Doctor. So according to Sri Lankan legislation, if a school headmaster flogs their student in good faith, it wouldn't be actionable under a court of law. Stay tuned, you're watching The Hot Seat. We will be back with more discussion on corporal punishment against students at schools. Welcome back, you're watching The Hot Seat. We're in discussion with Dr. Tush Wickramanayake regarding corporal punishment against students. Now, before the break, uh, Dr. Tush mentioned that uh, according to Sri Lankan legislation, if a headmaster flogs his students in good faith, it wouldn't be actionable before a court of law. Uh, doctor, in your point of view, how bad is this uh, towards, uh, towards the, the UN Charter that Sri Lanka has signed on to, uh, to ban a corporal punishment against students? Yes, so we signed the UN Charter in 1992, and um, since then we have had six general elections, nine prime ministers, and four executive presidents, and every government, um, every year, has promised the UNCRC that it will abide by the regulations, abide by its commitment to ban um, corporal punishment in Sri Lanka. Um, unfortunately, we, we have done a lot of 
uh, work. We start projects um, and we end projects right then and there and nothing has been continued and every year we go and um, say something new to the international community. So it is quite serious because especially now, um, as I'm sure the viewers will know that um, there was coming into the new millennium, um, the United Nations introduced the millennium goals for countries to develop and rise to. Uh, but now it's been replaced as the um, um, sustainable, goals. sustainable goals, development goals, thank you. Um, and part of that, um, the 17 goals and number 16 in terms of protecting children and prevention of t torture, 16.2 is for corporal punishment. Um, and as a pathfinder country um, in the development in um, uh, ending um, violence against children, I think there is a huge international pressure on Sri Lanka to commit to its promises and to ban corporal punishment and protect its children. So Doctor, you're the chairperson of Stop Child Cruelty. How far is the campaign spearheaded by Stop Child Cruelty being effective here in Sri Lanka? Yes, um, we are an infant organization. We launched on the 1st of September. And it, we are very unique in that we are, even though we are a civil society, we have now um, been given the endorsement by His Excellency through the Darwan Surakimu program and the Sri Lanka Foundation Institute, which is a um, you know huge strength to us, which is very unique. And secondly, we have um, two groups of um, individuals. One's the Alliance of Professionals. They are um, experts who have been working their entire lifetime dedicated to the protection and welfare of children. Some of them are Professor Harinder De Silva, as uh, the viewers might know, he was the first chairperson of the NCPA and a member of the Presidential Task Force. There's Dr. Tara Dimal, who was a Secretary of uh, Ministry of Education in 2005 when the first circular from the Ministry of Education came out, um, banning corporal punishment within schools. Um, or suggesting not to. We have um, others like um, Dr. Um, Doctors Hiranti Vijaymana, also former NCPA chairperson. So that's one group. And we have the academics um, and we have the advice from them. So the other group is the um, Alliance of Religious Dignitaries. Um, and they are there to give us deep and meaningful spiritual advice, not the sadhu sadhu, you know, um, I believe in God type of uh, advice, but um, the fact that all religions and ethnicities advocate um, non-violence uh, to children. So we have those two groups uh, spearheading this as well. Um, and the other uniqueness about it is that after only just a few weeks of actively campaigning and making a stance and making um, our voice heard, we have now been recognized as the only um, organization in Sri Lanka committed to ending corporal punishment by the global and um, corporal punishment organization, which is, which, who is the um, first line of call to the UNCRC. So your organization, Dr. Tush, the organization that you are chairperson of, Stop Child Cruelty has been recognized internationally as the organization based here in Sri Lanka to uh, campaign against uh, corporal punishment. Yes, if any children. of your viewers like to see, go on to endcorporalpunishment.org um, and it's a global organization, top right hand corner. Um, you'll see the support organizations, click on it, you'll see the map of Sri Lanka, hover over it and you will see Stop Child Cruelty, we are the only ones. So there, we, there you have it, all our viewers out there. We will uh, be back after this short commercial break to continue our discussion with Dr. Tush Vikramanayaka on corporal punishment against students here in Sri Lanka. Okay. End Corporal Punishment Vision 2020. Uh, that's the campaign spearheaded by Stop Child Cruelty. We've got uh, the chairman of that organization, Dr. Tush Vikramanayaka, here with us. We've been in discussion from the start of the program. Welcome back to Hot Seat. Uh, Dr. Tush, I believe we missed on a certain point. Uh, when you speak of corporal punishment, it's generally physical uh, punishment that people, people envisage. Uh, that was even my personal belief as well until I came here and I spoke with you. Uh, speak to us about the mental aspect of corporal punishment. Yes, according to the definition, is uh, corporal punishment is physical and non-physical. Um, and so any um, punishment, which means you're actually expecting negative consequences um, out of that, a punishment is negativity. Um, anything that causes the child to be degraded, humiliated, um, insulted, made feel, uh, made to be scared, 
they're all considered as verbal um, punishments and cruelty to children and they are non-acceptable things like you know we often hear guna you know burwa that sort of thing or um, to you know to say um, you know uh, the threatening that happens in schools of yes yes we know this will happen to you we will do this to you we will not give you a prefectship etc uh, they are all considered as um, uh, non-acceptable by the UNCRC uh, so doctor this campaign that you've launched you would have had uh, a numerous encounters of these sorts of incidents could you relate to our viewers out there certain incidents uh, that uh, corporal punishment has resulted in undesired effects Yes, um, very, just the other day I had a call from um, a child a parent from Ampara and um, they told me that the child was only six years of age and this child is always getting beaten up because the child is a bit slow um, in schoolwork uh, and because there's a huge curriculum, now these are the ground things that we have to understand, the grassroots problems, because there's a huge curriculum to get through, the teacher gets quite impatient, so the teacher hits this child. Um, and this child is now refusing to go to school. So one of the things that we have to understand is it's not just black and white that corporal punishment should end and one group of people saying, oh yes, we got beaten up when we were, when we were young and it hasn't harmed us. Um, that is just a myth uh, because there is no research to prove that there is any benefit out of it. Um, as I said in the past, um, before 250 research shows negative outcomes and not a single research shows benefit. But what, what we don't realize is that once the child is punished, there is a whole ripple effect of negativity that comes on. Now, let me explain that to you. Um, if a child is punished and you complain to the principal, the first thing that happens is that there is a wall that comes up and the, ch the teacher is being protected. Then suddenly the, the parents and the other students disassociate themselves from the victim. So, and then it becomes more of a mental punishment to the child on top of the physical punishment. And not only that, the teacher also has consequences negatively because they will either go off sick or uh, they will be um, you know, uh, um, expelled or they will resign. So that has negative uh, consequences. And then when the inquiry starts, um, it will also affect the other staff so there's a whole negative ripple effect that comes on and, and the way that we see it is that no matter who wins at the end of the day if it goes to court or who loses at the end of the day if it goes to court because of all um, this um, uh, the, 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 the cost of um, punishment, the, the having to deal with it for instance if the child doesn't want to go to school so the there effect is a that it'll have on the child, child um, the education, the cost to the education system, mm. the cost to the health um, and um, the uh, mental health system and the health system if they have physical injuries or mental injuries, the whole social welfare, the social system, the, the cost to it, um, the, the cost to the, the penal system in terms of um, legal um, uh, aid or whatever um, is quite huge. So it's not just the punishment per se, it's actually a, a loss to the nation. Uh, so, Doctor, this is quite a grave issue. Has your organization consulted any relevant authorities, brought this to the attention of the people who can actually make a difference and make a change in it? We can make a difference and a change. That is why citizens need to come forward because this is affecting us. There is no point in expecting anyone else to speak on behalf of our children or anyone else to amend the laws. We live in this country. We should be looking after our children. So there are other organizations working who are much more experienced than us, such as UNICEF. But sadly, those organizations have to work with the system that we have here. So this is the other unique thing about the end corporal punishment vision 2020 is that we are proposing something called a Pentagon proposal. It is a very historic proposal that we are bringing forth five stakeholders in government um, who are responsible for the welfare of children, such as um, the, the top is His Excellency as the head of state, um, who is responsible for the overall protection of every citizen of this country. And the other stakeholders are the Ministry of Education, uh, the Ministry of Children's Affairs, the Ministry of um, Justice, and the Ministry of Law and Order. The reason is that these are the five organizations when something does go wrong have to deal with the child. 
And um, so we, we are working together. We are hoping that we won't make the same mistakes as in the past when projects have been brought forward with UNICEF and such. It's only one government organization which has taken it forth, such as either the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of Women's Affairs. So we find that there is lack of support from other organizations. And that's why um, big projects, million uh, you know, dollar projects, seem to start and end within a couple of months. They have not yielded the expected results. Absolutely. Doctor, finally, we were in the final couple of minutes of our show. Is there any message that you would like to leave our audience with regarding uh, this grave issue that is facing our country? Yes, um, this is a, a campaign. Um, I must um, stress that it is an inclusive campaign where we are inviting parents, teachers um, to come on board. Um, this is not an exclusive campaign about punishing another teacher or sending a teacher to jail. Uh, we actually have five E's in our campaign. That is enlightenment so that we can have the awareness campaign such as this. The education where we will be su giving support to teachers for training in alternative disciplinary measures and also psychological support for them because I believe they need it just as much as the victim. Um, the empowerment to the victim and the, and the teachers and educators to know what's right and wrong, distinguish between discipline versus punishment energized to make other people involved in it so that we can move forward with different lateral projects um, such as this and of course to end corporal punishment um, the five e's and you can end it by joining with us in the petition which is live on stopchildcruelty.com and also come and join us across all ethnic and geographical borders um, as the um, uh, walk to real change on 30th of september at 3 p.m at Sri Lanka Foundation Institute and it will end at 4 p.m. at um, Independence Square with the participation of His Excellency where we will be presenting our petition and the Pentagon proposal. Thank you very much Dr. Tush Vikramanayaka. She is of course the chairperson of Stop Child Cruelty. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Of course as Dr. Tush mentioned you can go on, uh, log on and support uh, this initiative that they have launched to help better the children of our society and address uh, the problem of corporal punishment uh, meted out to students here in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for joining the hot seat. Do join us again next week. I'm Charlotte Benedict for the News First Team.